part three of the Backrooms Game Lab, where I've been showing you how to create a Backrooms game in Unity that has really nice graphics and is optimal for all devices, including mobile. In the previous video, I showed you how to make these cool graphics where instead of the, the light being white, it actually has this kind of orange glow around it. But what this video is mainly going to be focusing on is character movement. So we're going to create a character and get them to be able to walk inside of this place. So the first thing that we want to do to actually create our character is go to the asset store. And to do that, we're going to go up and we're going to press window. Then we're going to go down to asset store. Now press this and it will take you to a new tab. Now that it's loaded, we see this thing here that says asset store. We just want to come up here and press search for assets, search standard assets. And this is going to be a package that was made by Unity themselves. So here we go. Click this or down here. It's called standard assets for Unity. And it is very outdated at this point. So we are going to have to remove a package. But for now, all we need is the first person character. So just go ahead and open in Unity. And it's going to take you to this package manager here. Now for me, I've already downloaded this several times. Um, however, for you, you haven't downloaded this yet. So it's just going to say download. For me, it says re-download. Press download. It should be right here. After you press download, press import, which should pop up after you press the, the download button. Then a window that looks like this should open up after you press import. Go ahead and press import on this window and everything should start importing. This should pop up and it will start bringing all the files from the standard assets into Unity. Once it's done importing, you can just come back to Unity and you'll see something here now. It's called standard. And if you click on it, you'll see it's called the standard assets. So just go ahead and double click this to open it. And we'll see something here called characters. So go ahead and open that. And we'll see first person. So go ahead and open this. And then come to prefabs. And as you'll see, we have something here called FPS controller. So if you click this, drag it, and then just put it into our scene window right here, you'll see that our FPS controller comes into the scene. And this is actually our player that will be walking around. So if we just move it a little bit this way, and make it a little bit taller by coming over here and changing the height, make it a little bit bigger, make the radius maybe a little bit smaller, uh, maybe like 0.4 or point, let's just do 0.3. Then for the height, I'll just do, I'll do two meters because I think that's a reasonable height. So now we have a player here, but before we can actually start testing with this player, we actually have to get rid of our temporary main camera and make the main camera that came with this FPS controller, the actual main camera. So to get in here, just press this arrow icon here and you'll see something here called first person character. And if we click this, you'll see that it actually, it's a camera. So to make this the main camera, we want to right click this, click delete, then come into this right here, right click this, go down to prefab and press unpack completely. Now that we've done this, it should be white instead of blue. If we come to first person character now, this is the camera, we come over here, and we go down a little bit. You'll see something right here that says post processing. And this is inside of the rendering tab of the camera area. So it's right here, it says post processing. You want to make sure to turn this on. Now, if we go to our game tab, we'll see that our camera actually has our post processing effects. Now, if we go ahead and go to our game and we press play, you'll see that there's an issue. Something down here is screaming at us. It says all complier errors have to be fixed before you can enter play mode. And if you come over to our console, you'll see that there's a bunch of errors. Now these are not really that big of a deal because all we did was import an outdated uh, script. So we wanna go ahead to our standard assets, go to utility, and we're gonna see something here called simple, um, sim simple activator menu. We just wanna go ahead and delete this. And this is really outdated and we don't really need it in our script right now. And as soon as you delete it, we should see that this thing pops up. It starts saying compiling C sharp scripts. So as soon as it's done, you'll see that our errors go away. And if we press play, our, we should be able to play our game. Now, if I just click this, my mouse goes away and you'll see that we're in our game. What I'm gonna do to maximize this is I'm gonna click this, this area here that says game. I'm gonna double click it. And now it's maximized. So this is our game. You can, you can control your character with W, A, S, and D. Obviously, as time goes on, we're gonna make this box look way better. Um, way bigger, way nicer. It's going to be the actual back rooms. Um, now, someone did ask this in the comment section earlier. Are we going to have procedural generation of the back rooms or are we going to have to do it manually? 
Now for this tutorial series, because it is for beginners, we are going to be doing it manually. But at the end of the tutorial series, I will, I maybe, I might post a video about how to do procedural generation of the backrooms. Because procedural generation is so complex, it uses seeds, it uses if statements, and advanced coding. I don't think I'll do it in this beginner series, simply because it's complex. But I might do it at the end as just a one-off, Here, here's how you do it video. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this part of the Backrooms Game Lab. In the next part, we're probably going to be doing the most important thing. We're going to kind of clean up this room a little bit, make it look bigger. And we're also going to add in the wallpaper and the carpet and the ceiling textures. So yeah, next episode is going to be kind of important because we're actually adding our textures to the backrooms to make the backrooms the backrooms. If you have any questions or if there's an error still in your code, please join my Discord server. The link is in the description and also in the comment section. So if you just join it, I will be able to help you in a channel and get your errors fixed out. Thanks again for watching this part and we will see you in the next one.